turn the microphone over to my friend and great patriot, Thomas Massey from Kentucky. Thank you. I, ju I just realized the one thing all three of us have in common is we serve on the, ju uh, well, you serve on the Judiciary Committee in Congress. And um, the reason all three of us were drawn to that committee is that's the committee that stands up for your gun rights when we are in the majority. That's the committee the Democrats, we have to fight the Democrats on when they try to take your gun rights away. It's the committee that has jurisdiction over immigration, the drug laws, all of the things that are most relevant in this election. That is the committee where we do the work. And um, I, I will begrudgingly admit on the scorecards, the conservative scorecards, where I might get 95%, Chip Roy gets 100%. Uh, so for him to be here, uh, you know, he is rated as the most conservative member out of 435 in Congress. Supporting this guy should tell you something about his credentials. And uh, when I first got elected, we got elected, Ron and I, the same year in 2012. And I got up there and there were all these negative news stories about me and my mom was worried about me. And she said, are you making any friends up there? <laughs> and I said, mom, if you met them, you wouldn't be their friends either. <laughs> but. But I did meet this guy, like the first week. is a guy with a brain and common sense, two things that are in short supply in Washington, D.C. So he and I, instead of going to the glitzy parties and stuff, uh, we'd just go find a restaurant and go out to eat and try to read the bills and see what was in them and, and compare notes. And uh, so I got to know Ron pretty well then. And, you know, my litmus test for whether you understand the Constitution used to be the Second Amendment, okay? Um, it still is a, a strong litmus test. I'm from Kentucky. We like our guns just as much as you do in Iowa. We cling to them pretty hard, okay? Um, and I would ask a politician, well, what about the Second Amendment? If they started talking about duck hunting, I'm like, I don't think you understand the Second Amendment, okay? I like hunting too, but that is not why the Second Amendment exists, and you probably don't understand the rest of the Constitution if you don't understand that. I can tell you there's nobody stronger on the Second Amendment. And it's a very stark contrast if you got, go and look into their credentials. There's nobody stronger on the Second Amendment than Ron DeSantis in, in this presidential race. I guarantee you that. And um, so that's one reason I'm supporting him. But my litmus test has been replaced now. The Second Amendment used to be the thing that mattered the most to me. But something happened a few years ago, if you remember, and the whole world panicked, lost its mind. Washington, D.C. lost its mind, started printing money, spending money, shutting down our economy, telling us we couldn't visit loved ones um, in the nursing homes. All, all, every, the world seemed crazy. And um, they told me, they, they told us by phone they were going to pass a $2 trillion bill in Congress and that we didn't have to show up for work, that they would just do it by unanimous consent. I said, $2 trillion, that's twice the size of any omnibus bill we've ever passed. And you're telling us to stay home? Truckers are working. Nurses are working. The, the guy at the grocery store is bagging your groceries and carrying them out to your car. And you think because you're a congressman you don't have to show up and vote on the biggest spending bill in history? I said, get to work. I got my car. I drove to Washington, D.C. overnight, and I objected. And I made all members of Congress come back and go to work. You're clapping, but there's two people who were not clapping, okay? It, pretty much everybody in Washington, D.C. hated me. But Nancy Pelosi called me a dangerous nuisance on MSNBC. I think we need more dangerous nuisances to Nancy yeah. Pelosi. Yeah. I, I can tell you Ron was one. <laughs> and then uh, I got, you know, what really surprised me is Republicans were against me. I thought we were the, the party that, that goes to work, that shows up for work. And um, I was on the floor of the House of Representatives getting ready to object to the biggest spending bill in history because I knew it would cause inflation. I knew if you paid people not to work, they're not going to go to work, and it would shut down our economies, and you'd have shortages and all the stuff that we saw, the problem getting our farm animals, livestock processed, all of that. You could predict it, and it happened right there on that day. And I was getting ready to object, and my phone rings. And I look at it, and we're not allowed to talk on our phones on the floor of the house, it was Donald Trump. And I was busy, so I let it go to voicemail. And um, he was not happy with me either. I wasn't anxious to take the call. He called two more times. And then somebody tapped me on the shoulder and said, you should call him back. Well, they yielded some time, 
and they couldn't do the quarterback sneak and pass that bill. So I walked out and I called him back and he comes on the line and I was really surprised by this. He said, I'm coming at you like you've never seen, never in your life before. Have you seen the way in which I will come at you? I'm more popular than you in Kentucky and you know it. I'm back in your primary opponent and you're gonna lose. And I thought, well, I probably will lose because you are more popular than me. Um, but I thought, well, what do I have to lose at this point? And I went and I objected to the bill. I forced them all to come back. Uh, the president tweeted that I was a third-rate grandstander and I should be thrown out of the party. Listen, folks, I'm at least second-rate. Come on. Uh, so it was a lonely time. Eighty percent of Republicans opposed me. Now, I did win my re-election with 81 percent of the vote, even with the president against me. So uh, thank you. My platform was show up to work, okay? Well, it was lonely, though, okay? And um, people were telling me I shouldn't have done it, that it was a bad move, it would end my political career. One guy who I used to know in Congress, who became a big shot, was a governor, gives me a phone call. Ron DeSantis called me. He wasn't in Congress, he was in Florida, being the governor, and he said, I know you're taking a lot of heat. I've seen everything you're going through. I'm going through the same thing because I've decided to keep my economy open. I've decided to keep my schools open. And even though public opinion is against you and me, he said, keep the faith. What we're doing is right, even though people are mad at us. And the president was mad at him too. He said, in two years, people will understand why we did it and why this is the right thing to do. And I thought, my goodness, the, the politicians I serve with can't see two days ahead. Here's a guy that can see two years into the future and is doing what's right, not what's popular. I, I, may, I resolved to myself, if that guy ever runs for president, I'm going to work hard as I can to help him get elected. So I give you Ron DeSantis. All right.